HR issues can kill you. One complaint against your company can turn your world upside down. And you spend way too much time dealing with HR when you should be spending your time on making a profit. You should talk to Bambi. With Bambi, get access to your own dedicated U.S.-based HR manager starting at just $99 per month. They get to know you and your business while providing HR expertise and the personal touch you need and want. They're available by phone, email, and real-time chat, so onboarding and terminations run smoothly. Team members reach peak performance, and your business stays compliant with changing HR regulations. And with Bambi's HR Autopilot, you'll automate important HR practices like setting policies, training, and feedback. HR managers can easily cost 80 grand a year, but Bambi starts at $99 per month. Schedule your free conversation today to see how much Bambi can take off your plate. Go to Bambi.com right now and type in Accelerate under podcast when you sign up. It'll really help the show. Spelled BAM, B-E-E dot com. Bambi.com. Type in Accelerate. Me, 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 but also you. <laughs> the Pharaoh fast forwards his favorite foreign film. Powder donut. <clears throat> Okay, what's my line? Uh, the only line I see here on the script is get options based on your budget with the Name Your Price tool from Progressive. Oh man, that's a tongue twister, huh? I'm sorry, I'm gonna need a few more minutes. <clears throat> bulbous Walrus, the Bulbous Walrus. The Name Your Price tool, only from Progressive. The owl ran afoul of the comatose Coxswain. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and affiliates price and coverage match limited by state law. Welcome to Accelerate Your Business Growth with your host, Diane Helbig. Diane is a leading small business development and leadership coach, author, and speaker who is passionate about sharing valuable ideas, tips, and techniques with business professionals worldwide. Diane brings you the world's experts and gurus in all things business, whether it's sales, structure, social media, planning, or plateauing, guests bring their expertise and energy to each episode. When growing your business is your focus, Accelerate Your Business Growth is the show to listen to. Got a topic or guest suggestion? Let Diane know. The goal is to make sure you have the information you need to move your business forward. Thanks for joining us. Settle in and enjoy. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. Today's podcast is sponsored by Audible.com. Audible.com is a leading provider of spoken audio entertainment and information. Listen to audiobooks whenever and wherever you want. Get a free book when you sign up for a 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com slash business growth. Accelerate Your Business Growth podcast continues to gain recognition as a great resource for small business owners, entrepreneurs, and sales professionals, and that is because of the guests who join me for a conversation. These are folks who have expertise in certain areas of business, and they give of their time and their talent and their knowledge so that all of you, the listeners, can take the things that you need and implement them in your business so that you can be more successful and happier. Today is no different. My guest today is Larry Stewart. Larry is currently the CEO and president of LS Hospitality. He holds a Bachelor of Science degree from Cornell University School of Hotel Administration. Over the years, he has positively impacted his teams and brands that include the Walt Disney World Dolphin, NASCAR Cafe, Lowe's Hotels at Universal Orlando Resort, and Southwest Airlines. His first book will publish in December. As a matter of fact, by the time this airs, that book will be published on the shelves, as they say, so that you all will be able to get it. And later in the podcast, we will tell you how. Thanks so much for joining me today, Larry. Oh, it's my pleasure, Diane. I'm so excited to be with you. (laughs) I am thrilled to have you with me. I am fascinated by the conversation we are about to have, even though we haven't even had it yet, and 
I would love it if you would share with the listeners where this spirit of hospitality started for you. Oh, it would be my pleasure, uh, Diane. It started early on, and I really believe everybody's spirit of hospitality, if you will, probably came from mom and dad. And the people, their family members that they admired, that were around them, that encouraged them, mentored them, and kind of guided them into this world. And my dad was in show business. And a lot of people may remember him from the, uh, the hit record Volade or the, the old Ragu spaghetti sauce commercials. That's the nicest sauce, just like mama used to make driving up a Ferrari with the jar of Ragu. I said, dad, how could you do that coming from Italy? He said, be quiet and pay for your Cornell degree. <laughs> so, I, you know, I, I kind of get a kick out of that story, but it's probably very true because coming over as an immigrant, uh, at 13 years old and 30 albums later, uh, 13 Broadway shows, Earl Wilson and, and, and I'm sorry, uh, what was his name? Cole Porter and um, uh, what was his name? Um, um, oh my goodness, I'm, I'm losing my mind. But the bottom line, <laughs> oh, Wells, Orson Wells. And oh, sure. They, they took him, molded him and all the shows on Broadway and he toured the country many, many years. Uh, you know, he was in the Italian Rat Pack kind of in that time with Al Damone, uh, you know, and, uh, uh, you know, Sergio Franchi, you know, Sinatra, Tony Bennett and all that stuff. So um, I'm long winded on that one, Diane, because where it was born is when I was touring three million miles around the country with him, wow. helping pick up towels at the pool and checking people in and busting tables because he'd be getting ready for the show and I'd be in a hotel two weeks here, one week here, a month here from Puerto Rico to LA to Chicago to all around the country. And that's kind of where it all started. It was kind of my training ground of, of learning how to serve others, how to put them first, how to make them feel special. As my dad then on stage dumping out his heart in his songs, et cetera, et cetera. So that's where it all started. What an incredible gift you were given to be able to experience that with your father. It was, Diane. And then I always wanted to do it. So I started the show business thing early before Cornell. And long story short, Phyllis Diller had picked me up when she saw me perform and my dad Phyllis used to open for my dad, Phyllis Diller, and then I wow. opened for Phyllis back in the, oh. early, the 70s. And I was with her for eight years trying to get this out of my system because I thought it was easy to be in show business. But what I found is it's a very, very challenging industry where really you're just peddled as flesh when it really comes down to it. My father didn't like that part of it, but the exciting part in being able to entertain others and make them happy for that moment that they were with you, that was the spirit of hospitality part that I cherished. And what I got, what I gave to it was just enough to get back. And then that's when Cornell took place and he said, you're getting out of this business, you're going to Cornell. And I took the entertainment part and used that to fashion over 60 restaurants, the six major wow. hotels that I was, was honored to be on their teams. So, you know, Diane, it's all part of a divine path, I believe. I do too. I do too. I think all the things that we experience lead us to where we can have the greatest impact if we're paying attention to that. So let's, let's, I, I'm, I want to pull from this idea and this wealth of knowledge that you have about this for the listeners. And I'm wondering if you, because I, I, I believe you have identified missing ingredients that businesses need to have that they don't and, and what you would say those are? Well, it's easy from a business perspective. We just talked about the kind of the, the fun start, the, the excitement and charisma and enthusiasm that was the gas that fueled my engine, so to speak, and created this inner desire and passion 
to strive to be the best with the gifts I've been given. Uh, two of those gifts, Diane, have always been encouragement and inspiration. Obviously, the, enth the, the enthusiasm and the passion is, is, is been deep inside me. In fact, Phyllis used to say to me all the time, Larry, you have the four Ds. You were born with drive and determination, and you were led by discipline and direction from your peers, industry leaders, your parents being early on part of that. But really, that, those, those simple ingredients are part of the DNA, Diane. But when, when we switch the channel now for your listeners and all the business leaders, even, even line staff or team members that are just looking for direction and guidance and tidbits of wisdom, because I sure made a lot of mistakes. But my father always told me, Larry, make those mistakes and learn from them because that's the only way you're going to get better and better. So the missing ingredients I'm talking about are obviously not business plans, feasibility studies, budgets, financial reviews, and all the things that are necessary for business. But the missing ones that we pass over so easily are what happened to kindness? What happened to humility and generosity and gratitude? and unity, team unity. I mean, these are the few that I pointed out, these seven ingredients in the book that I believe are so missing today, Diane, because it's great to have technology. I know the dear Lord gave it to us as a blessing, but we can't be sitting down in restaurants with our friends and family with our face and our iPhone. Um, I believe we're missing the human touch that special moment when you're checking into a property and they look you in the eye and they smile and they remember your name in the favorite room you had or that meal in the restaurant or the anniversary or your child's birthday. I mean, these are the missing ingredients that create the magical moments that just get singed into our memories as special times. I'm trying to bring back, if you will, these old fashioned values. It's so great and so needed. And interestingly, it, it, it's funny to me because people are, are behaving the way you're saying with their heads down and into their phones and into their electronics and they're not connecting. And they're the ones who are also missing the connection so desperately. Like, you know, people will talk about it, but then they don't make that decision that they're going to be the one who's going to make sure that that human connectivity exists. Diane, if, if, if I can reach through uh, the speakers and just put my, my hand on the shoulders of those listening and say, if you love your customers, and I call them guests because you don't have customers over Thanksgiving, um, if you serve them, unconditionally, you will win their hearts. So we can have all the Cornell courses, the theses, and I, I, I've always followed uh, Stephen Covey and John Maxwell and, and Andrew Carnegie and the best of the best of the gold standards from Ritz-Carlton. Um, but it's that simple. I believe most people are stuck in transactional relationships yeah. versus relational ones like the one we're having. This exchange is not about dollars going back and forth or Diane, what are you going to do for me? Why should I come on your show? Yeah. No, it's about Diane. Thank you. I appreciate this opportunity as you know, I love, you know, our friend and publicist Dennis. Uh, it's a friendship. It's not an exchange. It's sincere. And if people approached their clients more by doing something special for them versus when am I going to get the next check and I'll do something back, yeah. that is so, so rampant 
in this world today. And then it, it's, it's Wall Street. It's what are we going to do for the stakeholders? We need more, you know, to, to, to show better earnings. We need to do this. We need to do that. But if I may uh, give you an example of that, Diane, do I have a minute to tell you that? Oh, absolutely. Okay. When Steve Jobs went forward with a mission statement, and we should talk about mission statements because a lot of, a lot of your listeners probably never wrote one for themselves. And it's very important to know where you're going in year one, five, 10, 20. Uh, and and a, lot of, a lot of individuals wake up and it's, they're, they're on the hamster mill producing yeah. without putting forth a vision, a dream that they want to accomplish. Well, Steve Jobs wasn't about selling computers and iPhones. He went and studied the concierges at the Ritz Carlton's. And from there, he built the Genius Bar. He said, we're going to serve relationships first. And after that, let's see how we can accommodate their technological needs. And Steve Bezos at Amazon, same thing. And the Cathy's at Chick-fil-A, it was all about building relationships in their restaurant. It wasn't about selling chicken. And on and on, the Marriott's. And, you know, I can go on and on and on with examples of, of, of leaders that were more about serving their, their guests, their clients, versus selling them stuff. So I've always been that way, and I've always given back. And the successes I've been so blessed to have obtained, um, Diane, I'm getting chills telling you this, to have worked and opened the Walt Disney World Dolphin and the Hard Rock and Universal and the Portofino and having a piece of my own embassy suites um, there's stories about some of these team members in the book that say, without Pierre, at my, our, our Haitian captain at the Embassy Suites, it would not have had the spirit of hospitality it did because he gave his all. It wasn't about the paycheck. And people came back because of Pierre. And he made them feel special. And he remembered their name. And they called and said, is Pierre there? Can he take care of our group? And Giuliani was there and the president was there and they all came to our property because of a reputation built over 14 years in this little wonderful downtown embassy suites in Orlando. So it's a long winded answer, but I needed to give you some depth to get, you know, so you have clarity that it just doesn't happen overnight. This is something that is well thought out within a mission statement and put forth and putting their fellow man and woman first. So I'm really glad that you actually went through that because I was imagining that there could be people listening thinking, okay, like the minute they hear hospitality, thinking about the restaurant industry and the resort industry and the hotel industry. But what I'm hearing you say, what, that what you're talking about is putting other people first is, the spirit of hospitality, and that should be the cornerstone of any business. Is that right? Am I hearing that right? Absolutely. And please understand, although the antidotes and the book was written through my experience in the hospitality, and when I say hospitality, it's hotels, restaurants, airlines, but let's understand, my wife was in funeral cemetery business for 10 years with Dignity Memorial. And when I met her years ago, and she said, and I'm telling her about, you know, she asked about myself, and I said, well, I've been in hospitality, this and that. And she said, well, let me tell you something. I think I'm in a little bit more of a hospitality business than you are. And I said, you know what? You're absolutely right. You're yeah. there at the worst possible time in someone's life and you need to listen and put that spirit of hospitality out there and let them know you have empathy for them, you care and you want to take care of any need they may have. So Diane, the book is using the antidotes from my experience, but they are purely relevant in any guest to client guest to team member business, hospitals, universities, 
um, you know, whether it's big box stores, Lowe's, Home Depot, things of that nature. Um, this is all about the relationship in, the, in, in, in what it should be. Can you talk some about why the spirit of hospitality is it, in today's culture and techno technological environment is so important to sustain businesses? Because I think people are missing that as well. And I know we talked a little bit about people not really connecting with each other, but I'm wondering if you can go a little more with why right now it's so important. Um, it's a great question, Diane. And I have a question for you that I'd like sure. you to participate, but let me, let me give you the short answer. Um, okay. You and I both have special places that we like to go because of how we're made to feel that, uh -huh. that special uh, exchange, if you will, uh -huh. that relationship. Yep. Well, okay, we have relationships, whether it be the car dealer, a grocery store, et cetera, and we can name brands and we know who they are. Okay, why? Why, when I go to Trader Joe's, is it much, or Publix, is it much different than their competitor? Uh, why, when I go to the car dealership that I go to, is it different? Because they have the spirit of hospitality. Technology is important, but yet let's use it to the point where, I'm sure you're familiar, press three for this and you're on the loop and you're speaking overseas <laughs> and you can't get anybody to help you. But there are companies that do not deal with that. And, you know, whether it's the American Express or the, uh, the FedEx or the uh, Amazon versus others, you're just thrown out there because I noticed there's not the same competition with those companies and they feel they can just cut their cost, outsource it out right. and not provide that quality guest service. Well, guess what's gonna happen, Diane? We're gonna move our business to where we're taken care of in that special way. So I ask you the question, Diane, where are your favorite places? In your mind, you don't have to mention the brand, but that special restaurant. Um, it could be a faith-based place that you go on, on, on Sundays or the weekends or Saturdays. Um, it could be uh, an airline that makes you feel special because they have fun, like at Southwest or, um, you know, an airline of that nature. That's why I've always yeah. respected their service delivery and execution. They just know how to do it. But it, yeah. you know, it, it's, it's easy, you know, an idea is worth a buck, Diane, making it happens worth a million. It took them yeah. decades to work that formula down. It's all about in the hiring process because I believe you hire the spirit of hospitality, somebody who knows how to smile. You can't train a smile and attitude or character, yeah. but you can surely hire it and then train in the skill sets. I don't care if, if you're a maitre d', you've been at the plaza, you've been here, you've been at the greatest restaurants in the country, and you know it all for 50 years, and you come in and you don't know how to be a team player. You know, you, you think that you're better than everybody else and everybody's supposed to, you know, get the red carpet out when you walk by. They don't know how to wash dishes like I was raised because I'll, I'll be in that bathroom checking it every 20 minutes, making sure that our place looks like our home. And you know, when you go into a, re a restaurant, you better check the restroom because that's what the kitchen looks like. So um, I, I hope that gives you just a, 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 a window into my thoughts on that subject and how others should truly look at it the same way. It does. An interesting thing about it is that it has to start at the top, right? I mean, you can hire for it, but if the people at the very top don't really embrace and aren't committed to this idea, does it really matter who else does? That's, that's the Titanic principle, uh, exactly. Uh, people on the top deck, they just gash the ship with an iceberg and everybody's just sitting around and everything is wonderful. Instead of being that team, they're sitting up in the dining room and I'm sure you remember the movie. I mean, nobody took it seriously. But if 
the captain were around the ship and understood what was happening, it would not have happened to the devastation uh, of the loss of life that they had. When I go in and consult uh, around this country, throughout the islands, um, and, and I don't have the ability to start with the executive team, Diane, I'm, I'm not taking the job. Or yeah, the right. Because I am not going to go collect a buck and have a program fail unless the commitment comes from the top. And if your listeners can make a pyramid on a piece of paper or, or visualize that symbol in their mind, what today is all about is inverting the pyramid on its point. So the CEO is on the bottom working the process through the team on the flat side on the top. That is the way it has to work. That's the way it works at Disney. That's the way it works at most uh, successful operations that I've been involved with, that I've been so fortunate to bring this program forth. We created teams here, example, which can be done in any place. It can be done in a bank, a shoe store, uh, a, a big box. Uh, taking teammates from, let's say, a restaurant. Everybody understands that. So we take a greeter, we take a busser, a server, a bartender, a captain, a supervisor, a cook, a garmanger, a, you know, all, let's say, all 10 different departments in that restaurant. We'd have eight to 10 people sitting around the table. And every month they would come with challenges within the operation. Well, if you had all servers there and all bartenders or all chefs, you wouldn't have the same perspective from each one of those teammates because they all work the operation. The front of the house wants their food now, but they've never worked behind the line in the kitchen to really understand what they're going through. So in our operations, we work them through each position. So they've been there and done that, and they've lived in the shoes of their fellow teammates. Then once they have that experience, it's a totally different outcome. They're supportive, they're, in, they're, they're compassionate for when it gets busy, and they're slammed. But they also recognize that, listen, the greeter has been overseeding the restaurant for the kitchen not to be able to handle the food that needs to be prepared and, and delivered. So now at these monthly meetings, they're solving their own issues. They're empowered. They're entrepreneurs now. They're running the place for the general manager. And this takes the stress off him trying to spoon feed each skill set and position to let them run their own operation. And this is what I've tried to do from airlines to hotels to uh, medical operations. And it works. The spirit of hospitality is that Tiffany box, if you will, at the end with all the icing and the whipped cream on it to really make that guest experience uh, a pleasurable and memorable one. But without the nuts and bolts, Diane, it's very difficult to provide this spirit of hospitality unless they have a well-run operation where everybody knows where they are on the team, their position, and their role. So I have to take a sponsor break, but then I want to pull on that a little bit because uh, it just sparked something um, <laughs> that I want to <laughs> go a little deeper on. So I'm good at sparking I, stuff. Yeah. yeah, I know. I'll be right back. Uh, Accelerate Your Business Growth Podcast is happy to be sponsored by Audible.com. Audible.com is a leading provider of spoken digital audio entertainment and information. They have over 150,000 titles to choose from, and you can listen to them on any device, including whatever you're hearing us on right now. And if you sign up at our link, which is audibletrial.com slash business growth, you get one free audiobook and a one-month trial of the service. Some examples of books you can listen to on audible.com are Sales Differentiation by Lee Sauls, and Transform Your Company by Alex Vorobiev. So visit audibletrial.com slash business growth, explore the books that are of interest to you, and receive one free audiobook when you sign up for the trial. Today we're speaking with Larry Stewart about the importance of the spirit of hospitality. So, Larry, 
as you were talking about that, one of the thoughts that came to my mind was that when a, a process like the one that you described is implemented, it's not just the guests who experience, uh, who have a, a wonderful experience, it's your coworkers. It's everybody involved. Everyone feels elevated because there's a different level of respect. There's more, as you said, you know, compassion and understanding about what people are going through so that there isn't what happens in a lot of businesses where there's tension between departments. Diane, it's, it's something I've always tried to balance in mentoring teams throughout my career. I call it internal and external guests. And Ritz Carlton has something similar uh, on their uh, on their um, th their values for their staff. There's ten, I believe, and it's basically we are ladies and gentlemen serving ladies and gentlemen. And I've always respected how they put forth that initiative, that standard of excellence. But I believe that if we don't treat our our staff, our team with that same respect, how are they gonna pass it on if we're not walking the walk, Diane? Right. Do you do the same with people around you, no? Absolutely, absolutely. It's, it seems like such a basic idea, but I just, that's why I'm glad we're talking about it because I don't think people necessarily connect the, um, the, the dots there and realize that one of the easiest things that you can do for your business is have a focus on the, those internal guests because it just spills out to your external. You're basically, that investment is what they get at the end of the day. Uh, you know, I, I use another expression, Diane, which I think you'll love, and you, you, you'd be, I want you to use it as well. Um, having had many businesses, with a lot of skin in the deal, lost a lot of money and made a lot of money. We talk about ROI all the time. And you look at the lease, the lease points and, well, you know, let's talk about all these financial aspects of our business. And it's important to be responsible and accountable to our lien holders and the banks and our landlord. But what about ROR? You know, we talk about ROI, return on investment. But what about ROR, return on relationship? And what I found is that those team members who feel needed and wanted and purposeful, because what I've always believed is if you reach into somebody, kind of like Vince Lombardi did, one of the greatest coaches of all time with the Green Bay Packers, I'm dating myself, but I love that man. <laughs> And if you don't know who he is out there, uh, just pick your favorite quarterback that has just made a team Super Bowl championships or any, you know, could be a basketball team or whatever. But the ROR, the return on relationship, comes from your investment in each individual, not team, meaning let's just throw a bunch of people out there and treat them the same. Individuals are different. Look at emails and texts today. For example, Diane, I, I get so upset. In fact, I was upset today because I got something, didn't understand what somebody meant. Why? And I'm saying, why are they saying that? Uh, I never, that wasn't my intention. That wasn't my previous email or text. I think technology sometimes does not communicate what the human spirit tries to communicate. Like you and I, we're having an exchange. We're using yeah. different tones in our voice. And guess what? Right now I'm smiling. And I think you can see my smile through the way I sound. But yeah. um, it's imperative that we let our staff know we care, that we know what their individual goals are, that we provide support, education, and training for them to get to where they want to go. Where a lot of businesses don't want to lose that key player because they don't want to do it themselves or they're afraid they're never going to find anybody with those particular skill sets. But what happens in essence is you retain them longer. They don't stay for six months or a year. 
they stay for five or 10 years. And when you talk about the ROI, as you know, it'll cost you 25, 30, 40, 50,000 to lose that five year veteran. And if it's a general manager, it could cost you 100 or 200. So that's where I believe the spirit of hospitality pays off on the staffing side when it comes to payroll, retention, and just doing the right thing by building up their individual teammates. So the R, so it sounds to me like the ROR leads to ROI. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Really, I, yeah, I get that. And right. you know, Diane, it's so this is so simple. You know, the missing ingredients. It's not like I, you know, I'm, I'm some Einstein genius. I'm just, I'm just a kid from New Jersey uh, who grew up, you know, waxing cars, paper out at eight years old, washing dishes, pizzerias, gas stations, all the way up. My father had almost 800 cars and he, you know, the next Ferrari or Rolls or whatever it is, because he loved cars, he wax it tune it and don't come in. There's no dinner until you finish that. So it was a real strong uh, upbringing of responsibility and earning my own keep. You know, here's a fishing pole for life, Larry. Now go figure it out. You know, yeah. because what I've worked for and I had 13 bucks in my pocket when he came to the country, um, I, thank, I thank God for that, uh, Diane, because if, 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 if I were that entitled kid, this book wouldn't be here, which my wife, uh, God bless Lori, she helped push the words onto the pages for me. And I sat for two years and, and did not make the big bucks to, to get this done. So the opportunity costs are astronomical, but I believe the return, the ROI for me on this is example. This gentleman called, uh, was looking for me to inspire his hospitality. He is a first class professional server at a place called the Argyle in San Antonio, Texas, a outpost of hospitality. It's been there for 200 years. And he just called and, and he said, I'm trying to get the book, but I, I can't get it. And I encouraged him on the phone for 20 minutes and we got him a copy of the book. He told his general manager about it, who used to work at the Lotus Club in New York and Windows on the World in the Trade Center, uh, you know, a first class professional, a club director, uh, general manager. He shared this story that I spent 40 minutes on the phone encouraging one of his staff members. He said, we got to get Larry over here to talk to our team. So the only reason why I'm bringing that up is I wasn't looking for anything. I was right. looking to coach, guide, and inspire a guy looking who wanted to be better. And here's this club where Robert E. Lee and presidents used to hang out at in San Antonio over the last 200 years. And his general managers in the top 5% of private clubs across the country said, we need to be better. We need to find out about the spirit of hospitality. Not This isn't about me, Diane. What I'm trying to say is, if people just invest their time, passion, and purpose in others to build them up, because as you said, a lot of CEOs just sit back and they want all the pats on the back and they want the, the, the big packages and the bonuses and things of that nature. It, it, it's not all about me in a bag of chips world anymore. It's about, I believe we've got to give back. And if you give back, it will, listen, the money comes, Diane. If you do, right. I think the, the money will be there. But when your hand's out like that serving a restaurant, just looking to sell you the most expensive bottle on the list and just keep selling more desserts and this and that because they're trying to build up the check for a tip, that doesn't cut it anymore. I don't believe right. And I, think I agree with you. know that, right? I, I, I do. I think this is, it's so interesting for me because I hear so many people talking about um, that the, you know, retail is dying and Amazon's taking over. And I think to my, and what, this is what I say to them. It doesn't have to be that way. Figure out what you can do to create an experience for your customer. Give them a reason to want to shop at your place. Because people want to be able to 
shop. They just, you know, when they're treated like crap, then sure they're going to go online because it's easier. They don't have to deal with it. They don't have to be disappointed. But you can create, a, and, and there are so many ex- examples of it where, and it's little things. It's, it's not expensive. It's not, you don't have to do a complete overhaul. It's just really caring. And I'm going to give you an example uh, that I experienced. Um, I think we all hopefully know about Duluth Trading Company. They used to only be a catalog company, and then recently they started building these stores. And they built one near me. So I went in there shortly after they opened because I wanted to get my husband something from from there. And all the registers were full. You know, they had people manning all the registers, but they still had a line. And they had a lot of registers. And they still had a line. And there was a woman going up and down the line asking people if they wanted a bottle of water. Oh, I love it. I know. And really happy. She was just really happy. She was cute. And so, and I noticed someone had a cup of coffee and I said to her, well, I, I'd like a cup of coffee. She goes, not a problem. She goes into the back, brings me out a cup of coffee. She's asking people if they want tea. I mean, seriously, it was the best. I didn't mind waiting in line because they appreciated that we were waiting in line to buy something from them and they were trying to make it as good an experience as possible. Simple. Didn't cost them anything. And Diane, look at look at what we're doing now. We're giving yeah. them credit because they did the right thing. If you do the right thing for the right reasons, you get the right results. Now we're now we're into business uh, one hundred and one. We're we're building their brand because they're taking care of the guests. They're loving their customers, serving them yeah. unconditionally, and they won your heart. And you're going to go back. Yeah. And you just told exactly. your whole audience about it. And that is, in a, that is in a plug. This is a real live story of the spirit of hospitality. And, you know, a, a couple of other points along that line. I yeah. learned from E.M. Statler, who really was the founder of the Cornell Hotel School. Uh, he started the Statler chain, which the Hiltons bought later. And he always said, life is service. The one who progresses is the one who gives his fellow men a little more, a little better service. And that is what you just stated. Now, another important story. Um, Did you ever go in uh, any operation and you say, hi, what's your name? Oh, I'm Susie. I'm just the cashier. Or I'm just the greeter, I'm just the dishwasher, or the janitor. I said, don't ever say that to me. You yeah. are the most important person in this business because I met you first. You are my first impression. Everything speaks to me. The cleanliness, the windows, are they clean? The atmosphere the smell, the music, the lighting, but the first person is the most important impression that starts it off. And the last impression, they better have good coffee and dessert, I'll tell you that. (laughs) But but Diane, I'm gonna go back to my point. In 1961, President Kennedy toured NASA. He was touring through with all the executives and there was a janitor who was sweeping the floor. And he went over, he said, hi, um, I'm President Kennedy. And she said, hi, I'm Mary. And he said, hi, Mary, what do you do here? She said, I'm helping to put a man on the moon. Wow. Now we leave a little pause there because we all have different talents and whether it's washing dishes or being the CEO of Apple, Each position, like each member of our bodies, has a function. It could be a a nail on our finger. It could be a toe. It could be a blade of hair. It could be our brain. It could be an eye. But each one is necessary for us to be complete. So like that beautiful Neapolitan pizza without the best buffalo mozzarella or San Marzano tomatoes or fresh basil or all those ingredients. It's not, it, it, it doesn't, it doesn't pass the test. 
So right. I try to give various examples with ingredients and whether that be the body or the pizza or an operation as you and I talked about with the wonderful lady who came up to you and I bet you could still see her face and her smile. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I just wanted to allude to those points because there's so much to cover here, Diane. I could spend days with you on the subject and we could still be teaching. Maybe we should start that, Diane. We'll open a school, you and I, to try to educate <laughs> people because I've listened to your shows before um, I was honored to be on with you today. And I'm so, I'm encouraged by your message, even the brand of your show. It really speaks, it, it, it's so necessary what you're doing. And it was born because of necessity. And I believe in parallel to that, the spirit of hospitality is equally necessary to those out there looking to find a, a more profitable, productive, and purposeful path. Because this truly makes one's passion feel needed. Because we all want a place in this world that a paycheck cannot fill. That is for sure. And I have to tell you that I really love the analogy to the body and how every single part of the body has purpose and value. I, that, I've, I've never looked at it that way. And when you said it, boy, it was like an aha moment for me. I just realized that is such a great way of looking at it and that it just, it sort of explains it all in that simple concept. And you know, Diane, I've got a lot of anecdotes like that. Um, we sometimes, let me give you another quick one. We misunderstand people because we lack knowledge. So I'm driving up in New Jersey, up in the, the hills as you approach New York State, and a guy comes by with a top down. I don't know if it was an old MG, just a, 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 a convertible. And he's yelling at his window as he's passing me. This is like a spring day, beautiful outside. He's yelling out the window, pig, pig. He's like, calling me a pig. I said, what am I, what, what did I do to this guy? And, you know, he passes me and I go up around the rise on the road over this hill and I veered off the road and hit a tree, avoiding the pig in the road. Oh, wow. But my point to you is when people check in and they're calling the front desk clerk names or they're in the restaurant, or they're just angry, they don't want to wait, or they're at Duluth and nobody came up to them with coffee or water, and they're going to storm out of the place and make everybody miserable with them. You know, misery is optional. But we don't know if they just lost their job, a right. loved one, uh, found out they had cancer. So yeah. my, my direction or guidance to those in the field you know, how do you handle irate guests that come at you from left to right out of the ceiling with ninja nunchucks and the whole works? You take the high road. Yeah. You, you lower your tone. You smile. You listen. And you try your best to take the high road at all times. You do not engage. Because eventually, they will come back, they will apologize, and they will do what's right. That is absolutely the truth. Uh, it's so very important. I love that. Larry, I got to tell you, I have so enjoyed this conversation. I love this concept. I'm, I uh, so appreciate you joining me to talk about this and share it with people and, and also put it in, in, in ways that are so easy to understand. Right now, what I would love if you would do is tell people about the book and how they can get it and um, and about you and how they can find you and, and all that good stuff, please. My pleasure. Um, the Spirit of Hospitality will be released uh, mid-December in all the Barnes and Nobles, Books a Million, and through Amazon, ebook sites, etc. But we would be more than happy to personally autograph a copy if you write, if you go online to LarryStewart.com, and that's spelled Larry, L-A-R-R-Y, Stewart, S-T-U-A-R-T dot com. And just put your information in there. I believe it's PayPal that you go into. And once we see 
you there, we would be more than happy to autograph it and ship it right back to you. We do not make the money on these books. The publisher does. Our goal is to pass on great information. This is a book that's great for CEOs of companies all the way to team members and businesses just wanting to be their very best. The book talks about the hiring process, training. It talks about team and how you can build the best teams. It talks about conflict and how to serve up the spirit of hospitality but more importantly, how to leave a legacy of hospitality. You could become rich and wealthy, not only monetarily, but inside your character. These are character building qualities that are missing, I believe, in business today. They've worked for us at Walt Disney World, Southwest Airlines, Universal Studios, and they will work for you. It doesn't matter if it's a mom-pop operation on a corner or if you're involved with, with a Fortune 500 company. So it will be our pleasure to, to send you that through LarryStewart.com. Feel free to get to us. And again, we consult all around the country. We love what we do, and it would be our pleasure to serve you as well. Feel free to go to that website if you need any support, and it will be our honor to respond as soon as possible. And thank you so much, Diane, for making me feel so welcome today. You truly have the spirit of hospitality. It takes one to know one, Diane. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's why I like the subject so much. I really, I, I, it really is just so enjoyable. So thank you. And I like to thank the listeners as well. You are who we're doing this for and our sponsor. If you would like to get a free trial of audible.com as well as a free audio book, please go to audibletrial.com slash business growth. As always, continue to prosper and be curious. And until we meet again on another episode of Accelerate Your Business Growth, goodbye and good day. Get started for free on IBM Cloud. With an IBM Cloud account, get access to more than 40 always free products with no time limit, so you can experiment with some of our most popular offerings for as long as you'd like. Explore our free tier and create your free account today at ibm.biz slash cloud free. Me, 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 but also you. The Pharaoh fast forwards his favorite foreign film, Pip, 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 Powder Donut. <clears throat> Okay, what's my line? Uh, the only line I see here on the script is get options based on your budget with the Name Your Price tool from Progressive. Oh, man, that's a tongue twister, huh? I'm sorry, I'm going to need a few more minutes. <clears throat> bulbous Walrus, the Bulbous Walrus. The Name Your Price tool, only from Progressive. The owl ran afoul of the comatose Coxswain. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and affiliates price and coverage match limited by state law. Hey friends, this is Jim Knight, former 21-year Hard Rock executive turned best-selling author and top 10 keynote speaker. And I'm Brant Menzwar, former frontman of Hollywood's most dangerous band turned top 10 motivational speaker and best-selling author. We host the how-to podcast, Thoughts That Rock, where we talk to rock stars, athletes, CEOs, astronauts, and even next door neighbors who share their expertise and opinions. Together, we tackle the most interesting and challenging topics of today. Whether you want to learn how to become more confident, how to deal with anxiety at work, or how to write a hit song, or use Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu in life, we've got hundreds of episodes to help amp up your life and move you forward. Subscribe to Thoughts That Rock wherever you listen to podcasts, and check out evergreenpodcast.com for more information.